Can I send a link? And then send a okay. Hold on. Thank you. Life. And I still link them as an abatio and them caramacho. Zarium and the Telemedo, if I like the Tavasin, is in the Kubana. Is Ario Arstachin, and date is a lay Mahavari Agarbutachin, and the Menagina, yes, and the Bonat in Achinet, and the Lamasha Shan in the Menichi Honor. Hello, everyone. We are so blessed to be with you tonight and to have a, a chance to introduce our guests. Speaker, Sanayat Admasu, Rosa, Santana, and Sherry Farmer. Uh, they will gonna introduce themselves. Uh, I'm gonna start with Sanayat, and uh, Sanayat is gonna start uh, speaking. Then I'm still in the name of Zari with the Medo program, Zita Gintanal, but I'm the Spronal, Zari Domo, it's legit Karen Agariz and Nekarabno. Sanayat Admasu Balalo, Ye Africa, Mahabara Sub, Tinat Ababak Timurit, Wim African Communities Public Health Coalition President Ning, because you get them by mental health when Belila Belagal Gurutia Linen Lemanagar, Zikarbana Nagalin, he better the Gagami Menadagono. Is I only yet to me at a government to know he in Yadrigit in the African Coalition, a Kabuzu, Italy, you. Um, yeah, Mangistim Hone, Yagalidri Jutoshkan Saralen, in Nomendino, La Africa, and Chuhonu Mahabara Sev, Los Angeles, Stelami Genu, Bagwang Wacho Nab, the Mubamiga Bacho, La Masra Dat, and Dongamo, and then the Chigar Kala Bacho, Yalon, um, Mendino resources. The Mahabara Savula Madreg in the Chile Namara that in the Chino Betaledamo, Panexe Higoch yet allow what you met Alu, but Yegizio it at the Salu, Lela Wicaral, he had a disitolo with Gochin and Dithno Mahabara Savula Macra Minichelo Bamilo Masarat, a young African coalition, Abreni Minasaracho, let that amped a room and no Dachom and Nakabracho Masravi to Chalu, and then now ye have read a sub in the Mahabara Sub. The Yuagar Guloti Misotan, Malitim, Department of Social Service, a he service Mindino, and then Levitim, Laganzevim, Lemetalk, Amlozunagar Miagalagunacho, food coupon, Lumisatunacho. Bazimasarat, and then the Gooch, Telawood all, Yan and Lamasred, that Betale, Baziba pandemic sad, Buzu, so which Megawachalu, Buzu, so she got a gun or two malu, Gidisra, Mat Atungarte Aizo. Bazia got ami in La Madre, what is the Abrent Tabarren, Agravan Azari? Um, good what if it him to swatch and Mendino, who gives a yet in I'm room, Bemi Malekat Chasaihon, Lilana Gariman Saracho, and immigration from the service in Set Uliru Chalu. Letting out a Mozari Zanik Arbornat, Rason Tasto Kalich, Shari, Kabzaka, was exit Saralich, Sodomo Yaziagar, um. Yet Abagawich, you know, get a district attorney by Maringa, Menendoni, Kertad Gulling, Yakalukubehun at Abagao, Yakanesuga Yakatamount Tenet. At the time, Miss Arusa Wushnacho, Guniaswa, mainly one Nasram and Dino, Baladegai to Gallet, Unus Rant and Nagaralich, Ladegai to Gat a little so much by Makina Mihun. But toxum, Balelam Domo, so Sigadelia, you get a lie and aggravated a cat, a la batch of so who live victims of crimes. And so, uh, Munainet Kamangist him set a yemiset or data all the way. Men many as for legal, Sumbami Malakat, Yamilo Nagar, but the Gagami Abram Lila Lila's Rauch come in the Sara. Uh, in a gut aminate that I'm a buttoner. Zari K to Pia community Jamaranal, when we got the Lodamo, Balilam, Balilam, Africa, Mahabra Sawatch in Yazor and Nun Sawatch, Bamantat, be you can watch any yet or gum and digawano. Means in Naragingidi Bamaringaster of Malo, Nasia Lutinagar, Tinish Bamaringa Kalalar Gunagon digawala madrag, Malas no Hulum to the coming diano. Uh, but a rough again is like Omena and Nasuras at Jonas Dalgo, men in the Horn and Giddy. Uh, and in Nagaru, you have to zip the gap zalich, zavistali. Okay, uh, thank you, Sam Knight, uh, 
Rosa is gonna uh, continue now. Rosa. Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Um, would you like me to start with my presentation, my quick presentation, or you want me to start just with introduce, a quick interview? Okay. Introduce yourself first and then you can. Yeah. Hi everyone. So uh, my name is Rosa Santana and I am with Los Angeles County's Department of Public Social Services. It is an honor to be here today and to um, be able to present to all of you um, the services and programs offered by my county department, the Department of Public Social Services. So um, yeah, with that, um, would you like me to continue with my presentation or? Yes. yes, go ahead, yeah. All right, so I've got a PowerPoint presentation here. It's pretty quick. So let me um, get this going. Okay, so here's my presentation. And uh, again, um, it's an honor to be with here with all of you. And I hope you will find it informative and helpful as you understand um, the role and the services and programs offered by the LA County Department of Public Social Services. DPSS, um, Department of Public Social Services is also known by its acronym. It's uh, um, DPSS is uh, um, the acronym for the department and it is the country's largest public social services agency and we value our community partners. By working together, um, our hope is that we can identify people who may be eligible for DPSS services and programs. And I hope that if uh, any of our presenters uh, may um, consider themselves possibly eligible for some of these so services and programs that we hear from you. At the end of this presentation, I will include um, my contact information. So if anyone wants to follow up uh, with, uh, with me, they can do so. So I'm gonna start. We are living in unprecedented times right now. Every day we can look around us and see how the COVID-19 crises has upended people's lives. Food insecurity is affecting a greater number of people. And unfortunately, the unemployment rate has remained high. And we know that the needs are great. We're aware that over 960,000 people are unemployed due to the pandemic. At the height of the pandemic, one in four households lacked access to healthy food. And many of our essential workers lack access to affordable health care. DPSS. Um, offers relief to families who lack a social safety net. DPSS administers federal, state, and county funded programs for people in need of cash assistance, nutrition benefits, health care coverage, housing assistance, and job training and placement assistance. Our mission is to enrich lives through effective and caring service. With a workforce of nearly 14,000 DPSS, is LA County's third largest department. Mm. We provide ser services to one out of every three county residents, and we provide those services in over 240 different languages. So I will start now with uh, the program overview. So first I'll talk about CalWORKS. CalWORKS helps eligible families pay for housing, utilities, clothing, and other essentials. The CalWORKS housing program offers short-term rental subsidies, assistance with payments for permanent housing and helps with payments for temporary shelter. Mm. We also offer general relief, which is financial assistance to indigent adults who are ineligible for federal or state programs. We have cash assistance program for immigrants which provides cash assistance for disabled legal non-citizens who are not eligible for either supplemental security income or state supplemental payment. We also have the Refugee Cash Assistance Program, which provides cash assistance to refugees for eight months beginning on the month in which the person was admitted into the United States or the date of asylum was granted. 
and recognizing that no one can effectively combat a pandemic on an empty stomach. DPSS also helps families put food on the table. CalFresh, known federally as SNAP, is this country's most effective anti-poverty program. CalFresh benefits are issued through an electronic benefit transfer card or an EBT card. And with the EBT card, participants can buy food at grocery stores, farmers markets. Households can then use their limited financial resources to pay utilities, medicine, rent, or mortgage, or other essential needs. And individuals can apply for CalFresh at getcalfresh.org, or they can call DPSS at 866-613-37. Um, let me move here. 77. We can expedite CalFresh benefits often on the same day. And also, DPSS administers healthcare programs. Medi-Cal provides comprehensive healthcare coverage to low-income people. Enrollment is offered throughout the year. DPSS also administers the in-home supportive services program, which, help, which helps pay for services provided to eligible persons who are 65 years of age or over, are legally blind or disabled, and it helps, this program helps them to remain safely in their homes. Disabled children may also qualify for IHSS. And uh, you can get more information and assistance by calling the IHSS helpline at 888-822-9622. The helpline is available Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. DPSS also administers the following welfare to work programs. The first program is GAIN, which is Greater Avenues for Independence, and that is for eligible families. To apply for GAIN, CalWORKs participants must call 877-292-4246. We also offer the GROW program, which stands for General Relief Opportunities for Work, and that is for uh, eligible individuals. We also have the Refugee Employment Program, and currently we're providing vocational skills training and job placement to approximately 450 refugee participants each month. And now that I've given you an overview of our services and programs, I will encourage you all to, um, to contact us. And there are different ways that uh, the public can uh, can contact DPSS. One is by our mobile app. Um, so LA County DPSS has a mobile app. Mm -hmm. And we also have um, uh, a website and the Your Benefits Now webpage within the website. And uh, you can access all of this as simply as, as just uh, the touch of your cell phone. We are also we also have a strong presence on social media and we encourage you all to follow us on social media because we often post a lot of community resources and information on food distributions and food pantries and other essentials on our social media feeds and our social media platforms and accounts. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And on YouTube, you'll find several informative videos. Or you can also call us and our customer service center is available to process applications. You can call us toll free at 866-613-3777, Monday through Friday from 7.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. And on Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And our website is dpss.lacounty.gov. And we have employees who are ready to take your calls. And in recognition of LA County's cultural diversity, we have available staff who could help people in over 240 different languages. Wow. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people know that. 
Um, <laughs> but we want to hear from you and um, and help you. So I'm going to start sharing this and just go to the DPSS website very quickly, and then um, and then I'll hand it over. Let me go back here. So I want to share our website. Let's go. So this is our website. And um, we, this is our website. And this is where you would go. So it's dpss.lacounty.gov. Can everyone we, see that? No, we lost your no. uh, slides. Uh, you yeah. see it oh, now? Good. Yes. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, so uh, it's dpss.lacounty.gov. And uh, this is that web page that I had mentioned earlier about um, starting the process to see if you're eligible for uh, DPSS services and programs. It's your benefits now. So you would go to dpss.lacounty.gov and apply uh, or click here on apply for benefits now. Click there. And then you would create a new account. So you click there. And that's where you would just put in um, a few basic information about, just basic information about yourself to start the, the process and uh, start the application um, and start just connecting with us. So I'm gonna go back to our main website. And on our main website, we have a lot of information about other programs and uh, resources that may help the community as well. So um, Medi-Cal households may be eligible for free or low cost internet services. So if you know of a family that is on Medi-Cal, they may be available, they may be eligible for free or low cost internet service. And we also are uh, letting people know that undocumented workers are now eligible for the California Earned Income Tax Credit. Um, and uh, you could go to our website, click on this uh, link, and it'll take you to um, the webpage to get additional information about this uh, important resource that would help uh, hardworking families um, keep more of their hard earned money so that then they can then buy um, other essentials for their households. And um, I'm just going to, let me expand this again. And very quickly, the Office of Immigrant Affairs is another county resource that is very helpful with lots of good information as well. And actually in my capacity in doing DPSS uh, community engagement, I also work closely with the Office of uh, Immigrant Affairs and uh, the Office of Immigrant Affairs has a lot of information about COVID resources for um, immigrants uh, who live in LA County. And uh, a lot of this information is helpful to people who are also undocumented. So I will put all this information, the links to these pages in the chat room, and I'll include some helpful, um, some helpful links as well. And one last thing that I wanted to let you all know is unfortunately many of our families have um, had to deal with the, with the loss of a loved one due to COVID during these times. And uh, we are trying to make uh, people aware that FEMA, the federal government has a COVID-19 funeral assistance program. And on the Office of Immigrant Affairs, their website has a, a page dedicated to this program. And uh, um, I just wanted to make sure that I get the word out about um, these resources from my department and the Office of Immigrant Affairs. So I will then wrap up my presentation and um, put uh, the links and my contact information in the chat room in case anyone wants to follow up directly with me. Thank you so much for this time. Thank you, Rosa. We uh, deeply appreciate your presentation, your time uh, to be with us today. Uh, we really appreciate it and thank you very much and a great 
great presentation. Well, thank and now, you. Thank, thank you, you for your time. <laughs> now uh, we're going to go to Sherry. Sherry. Um, I have a question, or should we ask a question later on? Um, Rosa, I have a question, you know, while the rhythm is going. Um, there was a public charge policy in the past which impacted immigrant refugee communities. This is during to um, Trump administration. How does that work? In other words, like if I can give example, uh, one of the things that's been impacted for if you bring card holder and bring your loved ones, a sponsor, they're not eligible to apply for any social service benefits. Um, so those are the kind of things. So what is the limitation to apply social service program, um, benefits right now? That's my uh, one question. The second one is, is there anything new that you guys improve uh, your services in addition to the previous, you know, prior to pandemic? Um, I see a little bit picking up this time. So I want people to know what is the difference between and after pandemic your services updated or validated and also very important of the public charge. So I'll start with the public mm -hmm. charge. I wanted to reference the community to the webpage of the Office of Immigrant Affairs because um, it, it speaks to that, to that issue. And uh, so my department doesn't really work uh, uh, directly with um, the immigrants who, who may think they may be impacted by mm -hmm. the um, by public charge, but the Office of Immigrant Affairs could um, answer any specific detailed questions that the public may have in regards to public charge. But I will say that there is an overview of um, public charge on the Office of Immigrant Affairs webpage. And I am going to make this available to uh, anyone who is on this Zoom or this live stream presentation, um, because there is a lot of updated information on the webpage of the Office of Immigrant Affairs. They're the best experts to address any cases and, and any particular questions that the public might have about that. Um, so thank you for, for asking, because that is, I know that that is a, a concern. Uh, the other thing is um, uh, we, uh, I, I'm here <laughs> to encourage the community to uh, come forward and um, get the help that you deserve and that you may be eligible to receive. And we want to hear from you. And uh, it's important for us that uh, we make these connections. Uh, you are all a priority to us. And the community is a valuable asset. Um, our Diversity is our strength in this county, and we embrace it and wholeheartedly want to uplift it. Um, so, um, uh, with that, with that spirit, you know, I, I want to encourage people to contact DPSS and contact me um, if if you feel comfortable. Um, and we have been uh, in the last few months working to um, expedite. Um, uh, applications, as I said, that in many cases, when we hear from individuals and they're eligible, we can mm -hmm. expedite the CalFresh benefits within the same day. And um, as well, we have um, gone to electronic signatures so that uh, we could speak to individuals and capture um, whatever signatures we need electronically so that individuals do not have to schedule in-person app, uh, appointments anymore, and then have to commute somewhere to meet with someone. Uh, um, we're, we're not doing that anymore. And uh, it is, I believe, streamlined, um, efficient, and um, all the more customer oriented. Um, and so I just encourage people to give us a try and come back and, and give us a call. And I will again post the phone number for our customer service center in the chat room. Thank you very much again. Thank you, Rosa. Any other question? No? Okay. How about Sherry, can you introduce yourself and? Hello everyone. So my name is Shari Farmer. 
I am the field deputy for the LA County District Attorney's Bureau of Victim Services. I look like I have no body, huh? I know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Let me change that. That looks weird. One moment. Here we go. Okay. Okay. Now you're talking. <laughs> So um, again, my name is Shari Farmer. I'm the field deputy for the LA County District Attorney's Bureau of Victim Services. So we assist victims of a violent crime. And when I say violent crime, that really could be any violent crime. It could be domestic violence, human sex trafficking, child abuse, child sexual assault, stalking. A lot of people don't realize stalking is a violent crime, but stalking definitely is. Um, gunshot wound, uh, as well as homicide. So, and, and there could be others, vehicular manslaughter, I mean, any violent crime. Those are the, the ones that we seem to touch base with on most. But I just wanna kind of walk you through the program to talk to you a little bit about what is covered um, and what the program is all about. So the program has been around since 1977. We are not a new program. However, I'm always amazed at the number of people who have never heard of it. But we really are here to assist victims of a violent crime. The plus about the program too is that we don't just assist the victim. We are also, we also want to assist the family. So let me just give you an example. If I'm walking down the street and I was beat up by five people, right? That is an assault. It would make me eligible for this program. However, because I was assaulted, now, every time I leave my house, my mom is concerned about me, right? Because that's my mom and she wants to make sure that I'm okay. So we're going to take care of her as well. We want her, if she is, is worried about me, maybe she has some, you know, mental situations like, oh my God, am I worried about her? What's going to happen? And so we want to take care of her from a mental perspective as well. So in addition to the direct victim, we also cover what we call derivative victims. And those derivative victims are the victim's spouse, their parents, their children, and their siblings, their brothers and sisters. And so all of those people would be eligible for the mental health component, meaning they would be eligible to seek mental health counseling with a therapist. Because we recognize that when something happens to someone that is traumatized, it doesn't really just affect them. It affects all of the people around them as well. And so we wanna take care of those people too. We also assist what we consider witnesses, someone that actually witnessed that crime. Um, we definitely want to take care of them as well because many times they are called to testify on behalf of that case. And doing that may mess with their psyche. Maybe they're now worried, maybe they're looking, maybe they're, and so um, we want to take care of them as well. We also assist good Samaritans. So those are people who maybe didn't see the crime at all, but they actually come out to assist, right? So if I was in the grocery store, I have no idea what happened, but I walk out and I see this car turned upside down and I run over there to help pull people out of the car. I'm considered a good Samaritan because I really didn't see what happened, but I am coming to the aid of the people in that car. So let me talk a little bit about what the program covers for the victim, right? Because there's a lot of these, uh, the, a lot of the services that we provide that would not pertain to the family members, those derivative victims, or that uh, Good Samaritan. So let me talk about what we cover for the victim. For the victim themselves, we cover their medical expenses. So if I have no medicine, if I have no insurance, then that means we would cover 100% of what happened based on that crime. If I do have medical insurance, like say for instance myself, I have insurance. So in those situations, we are considered the last point of reference. That means that all of the other things have to occur first, and then we will come in at the 11th hour. So example, with my example of, of getting beat up on the corner, I have insurance, I would go to the doctor, it would pay for the majority of everything, but if I had to come out of my pocket for anything, Maybe I have a co-payment. Maybe I have a deductible. This program would reimburse all of that to me, right? So we pay for a victim's medical bills and or dental bills, right? Because sometimes the situation may occur where somebody, maybe their jaw was broken or they were hit in the mouth and their dentures are, are destroyed. So we help with both medical and dental expenses. 
we pay for mental health counseling. So for a lot of victims that are traumatized, mental health counseling can be extremely valuable. We pay for all types of mental health counseling, not just counseling with a licensed clinical social worker or a licensed marriage and family therapist, but we also pay for things like art therapy or music therapy. As an example, we had a a young child that witnessed domestic violence. And because he witnessed that violence, he stopped speaking altogether for three months. He did not utter a word because he was afraid. He wasn't quite sure what to say and what to say to whom because he was afraid. And so his mom came to me and he said, she said, I really wanna put him in therapy, but, but I'm not sure. And I said, well, I don't blame you because if he goes to a regular therapist, they're both gonna stare at each other for 50 minutes and nobody's gonna say anything, right? So we've gotta put him in a place that's comfortable for him. So we connected him to an art therapist. And for a while, all they did was just draw pictures and, and she just waited for him to get comfortable. And once he got comfortable and she, she recognized that comfortability because uh, straight faces became nods, right? or listening became a smile. And so she recognized that he was becoming more aware and more willing to communicate at a level that was comfortable for him. And so she asked him to draw a picture of his family. And he drew the picture of his family, pretty good, pretty good artist, right? With his brother and sister and his mom, but his father had the face of a wolf. So mm -hmm. because of that art therapy, that therapist now knew where to begin with him. So art therapy, music therapy, the dif different types of therapy that can work very well for victims. It doesn't always have to be um, straight therapy with a licensed clinical social worker. And, and some of your art therapists are also LCSWs, but we just wanna recognize the range of therapy and how helpful it can be to victims. So we can also assist with relocation. Uh, Many times, and relocation is actually how this program got started, but many times for a case to be won, it takes the testimony of a victim or a witness, right? And they may testify and then they go home. And someone in their infinite wisdom said, wait a minute, when they go home, are we sending them to harm's way? Meaning, does the defendant that they just testified against, right, does their family know where this person lives? And so the last thing we wanted to do was put them in harm's way by just allowing them to go home. Mm -hmm. And so relocation is actually the first benefit that this program started with. Don't get me wrong, very shortly after came all of the other benefits, but it was the relocation that started it. So we will pay up to $2,000 to assist someone in moving. Now, don't beat me up about the $2,000, guys. I wish it was more. I wish it was higher myself. Um, and we continue to have this conversation with California Victim Compensation Board in Sacramento that pays all of the bills. This program, by the way, is not just in LA County, but it is in every county in the state of California, as well as every other state and their counties as well. Okay, so we have... Our advocates here may need to work with an advocate in Nevada, may need to work with an advocate in Louisiana, may need to work with an advocate in some other state, many times because people flee from one state and come to another and want help because they're trying to flee from their perpetrator. So we recognize that and our advocates work with many other advocates from other states if necessary. But right now it's $2,000, so don't beat me up. Uh, I wish it was like 4,500, but um, Cal VCB keeps saying, what are you willing to give away or give up in order to increase this benefit? And we're just not willing to give up anything. We want them to recognize that for a lot of counties in California, like LA, like Orange County, like Ventura County, uh, San Diego County, um, the $2,000 is just not enough. So we're still gonna fight that fight and the jury is still out. And so um, I'll keep you posted as, as things change, hopefully. But uh, for relocation, we are able to pay up to $2,000 to help someone relocate. So the relocation has to be for a good reason, right? You can't just say, you know what? I'm tired of living here. I've decided I wanna move. It has to be based on something incident related. <laughs> So, so let's say um, I did testify against someone and now the word is that they're out there trying to find me, right? 
So for those reasons, I testified against someone, their family knows where I live, maybe it's unsafe for me to go back home. So we can assist that person in relocating. That $2,000 can be a down payment towards another apartment. Uh, that $2,000 can be towards U-Haul and storage. Uh, maybe, they're, maybe they're going to move, but they need their stuff stored first. Um, I always use examples so that people um, can kind of um, have a, a better way of understanding. But if I testify against somebody, the family knows where I live, obviously um, we can put that money down on another apartment. Uh, the other way could be an emotional situation. We had a woman whose son, they were sitting in the kitchen across from one another and they heard gunshots out the window. She turned to see if she could see anything, but before she turned back, a bullet came through the window, shot her son in the temple and killed him right in front of her. There's no way she wants to stay in that apartment not one more day, right? But she wanted to move in with her brother. So that $2,000 took care of you hauling all of her, storing all of her stuff, right? We put it all in storage. And then when her brother was ready, we U-hauled it all, all to his home. So that's another way that the $2,000 could be used. Another way is through plane tickets. We had a human sex trafficking victim that was shot four times by her pimp. That woman is now a paraplegic. Cal VCB, California Victim Compensation Board, bought her a scooter, right? And the scooter was pretty expensive because remember she's a paraplegic. So now she has to move that scooter with her chin, right? But the word on the street was that if her pimp found her, he was going to kill her. So relocation for her looked like a one-way ticket to a whole nother state where her family lived. So I say all of that to say relocation can look very different depending upon the situation. Obviously, if you own your home, it's gonna be a lot more difficult. We don't expect you to relocate, right? You own your home, but you can use that money to buy cameras or surveillance for your home to make you feel a little more comfortable with being able to see both the closeness of your home and the parameters of your home as well. We pay for loss of income. So let's say you were in the hospital as a result of the crime and you were not able to work. Um, we will pay the difference of all of the monies you get from other sources and then whatever is left over, we would pay. So as an example, if I make $1,000 a week and I apply for state disability, state disability pays me $200, we will pay you the difference of 800 to make you whole, right? We're not gonna pay you 50, 60 or 70% of your pay. We're gonna pay you whatever is left over to make you whole. So we pay for that as well. We pay for crime scene cleanup, right? So if there's a home invasion robbery, I'm not trying to scare people, but I just want you to understand what all of these mean. And there's blood splatter on all of the walls, we will pay to clean that up, right? If you are paralyzed as a result of the crime, we can retrofit your house and your car. We worked with a woman in Inglewood for an example that was hit by a drunk driver. And as a result, her legs had to be amputated. So how her prosthetic leg touches the brake and accelerator is very different than how our natural leg would do so. So for a temporary period of time, we were able to move her brake and accelerators from foot gears up to hand gears. So she was able to brake and accelerate using her hands until she got comfortable with her prosthetic touching the brake and accelerator. Once she got comfortable, we were able to move those hand gears back down to foot gears for her. So sometimes it's temporary, sometimes it's permanent, right? Maybe someone needs to be in a wheelchair or like the girl I talked about earlier that needed to be, she's now a paraplegic. So it may mean rails in the shower. It may mean lowering your sink. It may mean a number of different things for both your home and or your car, but we can retrofit those for you. If you have what I call a 1952 get out and push, that means you have a very old car, right? And maybe that car can't deal with retrofitting because there's a number of, of retrofitting that needs to take place. But if the car is very old, it may not be able to do so. You can purchase a car through this program up to the value of $30,000. So that can be really good for that person that drives, but their car is older and it can't be retrofitted based upon the incident that occurred and how that incident left them in physical condition, okay? We can also retrain you to learn a new skill. 
maybe based upon the situation of the crime, you are no longer able to perform the duties of your job. We can train you, you can learn a new skill. Um, you can learn that new skill. You can go through interviewing classes, resume writing classes. I always say I can lead the horse to water, but I can't make him drink, right? We wanna give you all the tools you need for your toolbox, but you gotta ace that interview. That's the one thing I can't do for you. Um, but we definitely want to give you all the tools that you need to be able to do that. Last and certainly not least, these are just what's mostly covered. What we tend to work with most is funeral and burial. So if you are killed in a homicide, the program will pay your family up to $7,500 to assist them in burying their loved one, right? And so that can be extremely important to a family. Um, during that time, there's just so much trauma. There's a lot going on. And so we just want to be able to wrap our arms around that family and help them as much as possible. Again, the program has been around since 1977. So there are tons of people that we have helped within that time frame. There is a level of eligibility, right? So who is eligible for this program? Not only do you have to be a victim of a violent crime, and remember it's a violent crime, right? So if, if your car was vandalized, that's not considered a, vi a violent crime. It, there has to be a person involved, right, for us to get involved. So if your if your car was vandalized, it was on the it was parked, and somebody vandalized your car, that's not considered a violent crime. However, if someone was sitting in that car and got shot, now it's a violent crime. So there's different levels, right? There's felonies, there's misdemeanors, there's there's all types of of types of crime, property crime does not affect this program because there needs to be a person involved, right? Because we help victims of a violent crime. And so that can be really important. But homicides, there's, we live in, in LA County and right now, unfortunately, our homicides have increased tremendously. And so there are a number of people that we are helping on a regular basis as it relates to those homicides that are occurring. So who's eligible? Uh, there's only four criteria that make someone eligible for this program. The first one is they must cooperate with law enforcement. And mm -hmm. I don't want you to get scared when I say that, because now, right about now, law enforcement is not everyone's best friend, right? But when I say cooperate, that means to the extent that you can. So example, if I was shot in the back, right, and law enforcement is asking me who did it, I'm not asking anyone to create a name. What you would say is, you know what, officer, I was shot in the back and I really didn't see anything. That means you are cooperating to the extent that you can, right? I'm not asking you to pull a name out of a hat that doesn't exist or that you know not to exist. You cooperate to the extent that you can. What I'm talking about are people who say, oh yeah, officer, I know exactly who shot me, but I'm not gonna tell you. That's the level of uncooperation I'm referring to, right? The second one is that you cannot have contributed to your own crime. So I cannot run into the liquor store, steal a bunch of stuff, run out, get shot by the owner and then say, hey, 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 I want victims of crime, right? Because I contributed to that crime. The third one is that you cannot be a registered sex offender. And last but not least, you cannot be on violent felony probation or parole. And the reason you can't is because this program is not funded through your tax dollars. It is funded through fines and penalties that defendants pay. So for example, if I was arrested and convicted for a misdemeanor, out of all of the, the administrative fees that I owe, $150 comes to this fund. If I am arrested and convicted for a felony, $300 comes to this fund. So if you are on violent felony probation or parole, I'm not about to pay you out of a bucket that you may owe money to. And that's why they are not eligible. Other than those four criteria, that's all. Once you meet those, you would be eligible for the program. So I don't care whether you are documented or undocumented. That does not make you any less of a victim and you could be eligible for our program. I don't care where you live. I don't care what your last name is. I don't care how much money you make. This is not a low income program. This is a program for victims of a violent crime. So we have helped people that make $10,000 a year, just like we've helped people who make $100,000 a year. 
but they all have that one thing in common and that's them being a victim of a violent crime. So I could go on and on about this program. Um, I, I probably should stop there because I've probably gone too far already, but um, I'm here. Um, definitely, I can put my name, my telephone number and my email in the chat. Um, and so if anyone ever wants to touch base with me, they are more than like they are, they are more than welcome to do that. We have 60 advocates all throughout the county of LA that connect directly with those victims to help them fill out the application, help answer any questions and move them through the trajectory. Because at the end of the day, what I always say is what we wanna do is we wanna move victims from victim to survivor and survivor to thriver. So thank you very much for your time. I truly appreciate you. And again, I will put my information in the chat. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you for your wonderful information sharing with us. And thank you for being with us tonight with your busy, busy schedule. And we appreciate uh, that you're with us today. And if anybody have any question for sure. I have a question for you, Shari. When is do you have to tell DV? A lot of people, we, we tend to use this acronyms. We understand, but this is for the public. Um, so that is um, from DV and most of the people, the reason I say DV, which is domestic violence, that means like people when partners with their husband, um, wife or just boyfriend, girlfriend, whoever's have a violence, that's what the, the domestic violence DV means, just to clarify that. Uh, so in doing so, um, I think a lot of clients comes to us with a DV case, or that's the reason why I am. Uh, as you say, um, DV has to be, in, in other words, the incident has to be reported to the police. In other words, police has to get involved, not necessarily telling where your husband or what your wife is going to be the predator, but must report to police, right? Police have some sort of document in order to qualify this program. So let me talk about domestic violence because domestic violence is a little different than most of the services that we provide. Mm -hmm. Usually for the services we, we provide in order to substantiate what happened happened, we need a crime report or a police report because that substantiates it, right? I get a lot of calls where people say, hey, somebody beat me up on the corner and I heard you guys can give me $300. Okay, well, I can't substantiate that, right? Without that crime report. Domestic violence, sexual assault, and human sex trafficking are a little different. Domestic violence, it is not mandatory to have a crime report in order to apply for our services. Yeah. And the reason that is, is because we recognize how difficult it may be for that victim to turn over on their perpetrator. Because oftentimes that perpetrator is very known to them. And that in and of itself can be extremely scary. So for a DV victim, they don't have to have a crime report, but in lieu of that crime report, there are some other ancillary documents that we would need. Because remember, without the crime report, we have to be able to prove this case up to California Victim Compensation Board, because they're the ones that are going to approve it, right? So we could, there's a number of other types of documents that we could receive in lieu of that police report. One, if they are already at a shelter, a letter from that shelter on their letterhead could work. If they're in the hospital, if they've had medical bills, that could work. Because if we request it from the hospital, because we work for the DA's office and they know that we have the contract with CalVCB, they are going to give us all of the information with regard to that specific visit, which may include pictures, which may include a lot of other things that someone else might not get, but those things could definitely help prove up that case. Uh, maybe there are incident reports. So for a lot of people who are not very familiar with law enforcement, there's two different types of reports. One is the crime report, right? The crime report is something that someone fills out or once completed because they want to either file charges or press charges or the, an actual crime occurred where law enforcement showed up and they know that they're gonna do a crime report for that. 
-hmm. addition to a crime report, there's also something called an incident report. Mm -hmm. And an incident report is something that law enforcement must fill out every time they show up to an incident. So for domestic violence, you could have no crime reports at all, right? But maybe you have five incident reports because you've called law enforcement because something okay. occurred at the home. And when they got there, they may have asked, do you, want, do you want us to file a police report? Do you want us to take the person to jail? And you've said no. But that doesn't mean that incident report was not completed. So sometimes those incident reports can prove up a case very well because if law enforcement has been to that, that residence five or six times and they have five or six incident reports, that can really help to prove up a case. So we can take those in lieu of the crime report as well. Um, so there's a number of things that we can take in lieu of the crime report for domestic violence to mm -hmm. try and help prove up that case. So a crime report is not always necessary. Okay, great, thank you. You're welcome. Question. Hello, I Hello. remember your face. <laughs> How are you doing? Good, just, good just, I like the presentation, it's very, it's very helpful. Let me ask a question here, how far do you go back to process a uh, victim of crime uh, information if the if the person didn't know about victim of crime or ha was a victim maybe two three four years ago do you still go back if they have the, the records or you don't go back that far or how well, far can you go back yeah yeah actually a victim can come to us a victim has seven years from the date of the incident to apply with the program. And the okay. reason it is seven years is because we recognize all victims are not the same, right? When something happens, there are some victims that are ready to do paperwork and sit with someone right away. But there are some victims that because of their trauma, they become very stagnant. And thinking about help, trying to contact someone is like the furthest thing from their mind. And the other, and three, they may not even know that we exist. Thank you. Right. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. Yeah, I get calls from people all the time that say, you know, my brother was shot two years ago and I didn't even know about you guys. And I go, not a problem. You're still well within your time frame. Mm -hmm. So they have seven years from the date of the incident to apply. But even if it's been more than seven years, Timbo, I always tell people apply anyway. There may be a justification that we can use for why it took as long as it did. And I always say nothing beats a failure but a try. Right. If okay. you never apply, then you know you're not going to get approved. But if you try, you never know. Thank you. Appreciate that. You're welcome. All right. I have a question. If yeah. the incidents happen in different states and then the uh, people, you know, moved to another state, if that let's see if they're happening in Washington, D.C., now they're moving in Los Angeles. Can they apply here or they have to go back to Washington, D.C. to? To apply. Mm -hmm. So usually the program is all about where the incident occurred, mm -hmm. right? So let's say, I'll give you an example. We had a woman from Louisiana whose daughter was uh, molested by her biological father. She actually told the police in Louisiana, but then she fled here to California, mm -hmm. right? She contacted me. We con I got her in touch with an advocate, but then we contacted Louisiana's police department mm -hmm. to get that crime report mm -hmm. and bring it here. And now that she's here, we're going to assist her, but it's going to be based upon what Louisiana's program paid. Because okay. at the time of the incident, she was a resident of Louisiana. Got it. Right. Just and just the opposite. Right. If I'm if I'm vacationing in Texas and something happens to me in Texas, um, I may file the report in Texas, but I want to come home. I don't want to stay in Texas. Mm -hmm. So we may get the crime report from Texas. But because I'm a resident of L.A., I'm what my services are going to be is based upon what L.A. pays, because this is where I'm a resident. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other question before I go to Sanai? Maybe if she can summarize. No, I know. I'm, 
I know I'm a little late. I wanted to get the information, the, the application process, and uh, but maybe I'll get it later on. I know I, I kind of late, come late to the meeting, but I'll get it later on. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you. Sunny, you wanna? Uh, okay. So, from Hike? Um, before I do that, just for them to know in English. Um, the reason because we connected today, we also do the African coalition do a lot of case management. Matter of fact, DPSS, we do thanks to Salam, uh, really take this opportunity to thank her. She's really great, whether it's uh, DPSS immigration and also uh, what was the name of uh, where Rosa say for the um, elderly people or disabled people, a social worker. She's great. She's very unique in a way. She knows the uh, connection. She knows the time. She has to be on the phone, all that. So um, you're welcome to connect with us. And uh, Shari, of course, which is one of our partner organizations we work with at different levels. Um, so we have no problem. Um, sometimes the reason we bring it to the community, uh, not all of us are digital savvy and uh, Nowadays, it's virtual and digital. It, people must have access to computer and knowledge, and I'm the worst. Uh, then that's where we step in. We would like to help as many as we can. Um, as much as information received, the practical part is difficult to all of us. So uh, we just like to inform you that we'd be very happy to help you with any application regarding DPSS, whether or victims of crime uh, form as well. So we've been working with this agencies. I just wanna mention that. And also uh, thank you so much. I think this is a great opportunity for us and to learn again and again every day, more so DPSS, we need more of you guys information. It's good to see, we're talking the actual people that on you know website um, is difficult for the people. Where we came from, we have a collective society that we like in-person connection. That's part of the culture. So it's great that to have you today and we'll continue to work. So you want me to talk to Nima Herrick now? We have how many yeah, minutes? I just want to add something. It's just like any information you guys uh, uh, provide to African Collision Case Manager or anything is very confidential. If we have to link the the you know, if you have to link you to DPSS or maybe with Sherry, we have to have a consent from you guys to make sure that information is protected and is confidential. So I really wanna uh, say it because it's a lot of uh, hesitant sometimes from the clients to provide us the information, social security number, um, ID number, stuff like that, but it's very confidential. We don't share your information to anyone unless it's necessarily and benefited you to get other services from the community. Oh, thank you. Well, to start with, DPSS will not let us to work with you unless we have to declare we have authorization from you. Means like you have to give us your consent to speak on behalf of you at any service, a matter of fact whether DPSs or uh, victims of crime. So that's just as it is. Uh, thank you so much to bring in that because we have experienced some challenges. They want us to represent, they want us to help them though, but it's just still resistant to provide information. Um, yes, it's also our job responsibility to protect your personal information. We just like affirm you that as well. Thank you. Uh, so we have time to wrap up on how long. <laughs> You want me to speak in Amharic? Just a little bit summarized in Amharic. To, okay. Yeah. So, in Gidi, Yamajamero, Rosa and Nagarachin, and Dalquachu, Yamahabaravi, uh, Data Minikapalipet, a DPS Sessano, a Hingidi de Metagut, Yamagum Kupon, Alle, would stamp, um, Yabitur Data Alle, uh, Yakmina, of course, medical menot, a better Mazano. Aun do mo'y tayo mari sa nazi de azaun to chordata mi fa lubat bita chuma to mi rodo to aun do mo pasitay nga hano lujo chimi rodo button service alla no metelo esuho lunda alla hano inya ba mahal hano ihin nagar masakat nda min fa lugar na nda min chil malit mamal kacaw alla laide lam swabale chuma serot betalay aun 
ወደ ቢሮ መሄድ ስለሌለ እዚሁ ባለሁት በኮምፒውተር ላይ ስሩ ስለሚባል አንዳንድ ሰዎች ወደ ኋላ የሚቀሩት በጊዜው መልስ ስለማይሰጡ ለተለከላቸው ድብዳቤ የሚሰጣቸው እርዳታ እየተቋረጠባቸው ወደኛ የሚመጣው ግን ይሄን አጋጣሚ ምን ተጠቀመው ይሄ ሁሉ እንዳለ ሆኖ ደሞ እኛም ለረዳ እንደተዘጋጀን ነው እንግዲህ ሮዛ ያለችው ብዙ በማርኛም ታትሞ ወጥቷል በማርኛ ኢትዮጵያ ኮሚኒቲን ለማሰራጨት ቃል ገብቷል እኛም ደሞ በመንፈልገው አክቹሊ ምንድነው ምን አረጋው ያሰብኩት ፕሪንት አድርገን እኛ በሬስቶራንቶች አንድ አንድ ቦታ ቸርች በክርስቲያን አካባቢ ምናምን ፍላየሩን እናስቀምጣለን ሌላው ቢቀር መደወት ይችላልላችሁ ደውሎ ማነጋገር ይችላል የተለያየ ቋንቋ ለም ያስተረጉሙ ብላለች ይሄ ደግሞ ሌላው አጋጣሚ ይሆናል ይሄ እንግዲህ የዲፒኤስኤስ ወይ ማህበራዊ ዳታ ድርጅት ነው የሚቀጥለው ሻሪ ያወራችን እንግዲህ በአጋጣሚ በከተማችን ወይ በማህበረሰባችን አንድ አንድ አስደንጋጭ የሆኑ ነገሮች እንግዲያም በሚመለከት የባልና ሚስጥብ ማለት መጨቃጨቅ ብቻ ሳይሆን መደባደብ ደርሶ ወይም ደግሞ ሆስፒታል ላይ የሚያደርስ ጉዳይ ሲኖር ወይም ደግሞ የጠመንጃ አንድ አንድ በመጥፎ አካባቢ ምንኖረው ሚገደሉ አሉ በአጋጣሚ መኪና ማጋጣሚ መኪና አደጋም ሊሆን ይችላል በማንኛውም በአደጋ የሚገጠመን ጊዜ ይሄ ያ ድርጅት የተወሰነም ቢሆን እርዳታ አለው ለምሳሌ አሁን ከቤት መልቀቅ ካለብን እና ወደ አንድ ቦታ መሄድ ካለብን 2000 ዶላር ይሰጣል ብላለች ይሄ ማለት ደግሞ ቤት መልቀቅ ብቻ ሳይሆን ቤታችን ደግሞ አንድ ነገር ሲሆን ለብዙ ነገር ይጠቅማል ብላለች ስቶሬጅ እናስቀምጥበታለን ታገራ ሀገር መሄድ እንችላለን እንደገና ደግሞ በዚህ አጋጣሚ ሆስፒታል ሄደን ምን ከፍለው ገንዘብ ከሌለን ክፈሉ ምን ባለው ወይም ደግሞ ተጨማሪ ገንዘብ ከመዲካ ሌላ እሱ ሁሉ እንደሚከፍሉ አስረድታናለች እሄ ሁሉ እንግዲህ በተለይ ባሁኑ ሰዓት ብላለች የዚህ የግድያውም የዝርፊያውም የልብነቱም ጉዳይ እየባሰ መጥቷል ምክንያቱም ሰው ስራ አጣ ስለመጣ መጠንቀቅ አለብን ከመጣ ግን እንደዚህ እንደዚህ ያሉ አጋጣሚዎችን ወሽደን መንግስትም ሆነ የግልም ድርጅቶች የሚሰጡትን እርዳታ ለናንተ ለማድረስ ነው ይሄንንም ደግሞ ስናደርግ የኢትዮጵያ ኮሚኒቲን ወደፊት የሚያዘጋጀ ይሆናል እኛ ግን አሁን በእኛ በመንሰራው አፍሪካን ኮሌሽን አበሾች አሉ አማርኛ ይሄ መናገራለሁ ሁላችንም አብዛኞቻችን አማርኛ አሁን ተጠቅመን እኛ ፎርሙን ሞልተን መላክ እና ለነርዳችሁ ነውዳለ በአጋጣሚ ግን ይሄ እንግዲህ አንድ አንዶቻችን የሚያስፈራ ጉዳይ ይሆናል የግል ታሪካችንን መታወቂያችንን ማስጣት አንፈልግም በዚያ ጋጣሚ ለናገልጽ ምን ፈልገው ተማም ነው መስራት ያለብን ስራችን ስለሆነ ከየ መስራ ቤቱ ማስጠንቀቅ ይሰጠናል ምን ያህል የናንተ ሚስጥርና የናንተ ኢንፎርሜሽን መጠበቅ እንዳለብን ይሄ የስራችን አንዱ ባህሪ ሆኖ ግን ተማም ነን እንድንሰራ የተሟላ ምን ፈልገው ከናንተ ማግኔት ይልብን ያይኖርብናል ማለት ነው እንግዲህ ይሄ ጉዳይ በዚያ በቃ ዛሬ በትንሹን የቀረመ ወደፊት ድረስ ብሎ ሌላም ሌላም ኢሚግሬሽን በሚመለከት ሌላም ደግሞ ያስፈልገናል የሚልቱን በትምርት ቤት አካባቢ ያሉትንም ችግር ለማቃለል እነሱንም እናመጣለን ብለናል ኮቪድን በሚመለከት በቅርቡና አዘጋጃለን እና ይሄን አጋጣሚ ተጠቅመን እንደገና ለመገናኘት ስለበቃን ላዘጋጅቹ ለኢትዮጵያ ኮሚኒቲ ሴንተር ትልቅ ትልቅ ክብር አለን በጣም እናመሰግናለን ትዝ ዛሬ ሆስታችን ነበርች እናመሰግናለን ትዝ ሞር ሶ ማይ ፍሬንድስ ሻሪ ኤንድ ሮሳ ዊ ቴንክ ዩ ኤንድ ኦን ቢሃፍ ኦፍ አፍሪካን ኮሌሽን ኢን ዘ ሾርት ኮል ዩ ስቴፕ አፕ ኤንድ ጀስት ቢ ፓርት ኦፍ ኢት ኤንድ አይ ቸርን ቱ ዩ ትዝ ቴንክ ዩ አገይን ሪሊ አፕሪሼት ፎር ዩር ታይም and uh, i know how busy you guys are with your busy schedule you just you know come here to help us to communicate with us to educate us uh, with everything so we really appreciate and we hopefully we're going to meet again to educate our community in the near future with uh, different uh, you know staff so we really appreciate for everything thank you can i make an announcement um before we leave um shari and african coalition and other organizations willing to help 
uh, brothers and sisters who are staying in Tijuana, Mexico border. I like the other communities, they're underserved uh, to the point they don't have anything to eat um, and the sanitation items we've been told. Some of the volunteers attorneys went to visit them. So we are in the process organizing some team go there to visit in person. Um, this is a humanitarian. This is about our mission or, or life principle, to be honest with. Um, we need to do this because it could be, it's just a very fine line of what's going to happen to us. And it's just the right thing to do. Um, as an African, as an immigrant refugee, we've all been at a certain point, uh, one point on a one official, God knows. We've been there. So we let's just step up. Uh, we would like to share with information through the email and we'll send it to ECA, SALA. Uh, to share with you guys, if you have anything uh, to offer, whether it can go with us or just provide uh, some items, we'd be very happy uh, to receive. We're planning to go into September. Um, Shari, we thank you really greatly that you provided a lot of um, donation today that our brother and sister is going this weekend to visit. There's over 150 African and the Caribbean immigrants um, resided at the border, Tijuana, which is really a um, very sad condition, um, including uh, women and children. So we challenge you and encourage you to be part of this um, initiative. That is um, a good cause. Just wanna say that, thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thanks. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you, uh, Miss Santana. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Stay blessed. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.